what we've been doing on one of our land from Western Guards. So I'll just keep initial slides. Maybe like this are, these are quite overlapping. Yeah. So Oikos basically we do ecological restoration and biodiversity conservation wherever possible. So this particular case study comes with a very pure ecological restoration kind of effort that we've been taking, but on all other projects we try to integrate uh, these things. Okay. So what is ecological restoration is to bring back the original or known previous conditions. So there are various things that you can restore and how to maybe uh, decide that what to restore, it comes from the ecological assessment that we've been doing. So this case study will anyways explain that to you. So this is at one Kusavde, which is a very small village from Koina catchment in Satara district and the land is owned by uh, actor Atul Kulkarni and his cousins and friends. Okay, so why conservation perspective? This is a little bit theory that we keep on stressing that urban citizens who buy land at the countryside, they're not dependent on the land for their livelihood. So the best perspective they can adopt is conservation and restoration of biodiversity and ecology, maybe. Yeah. So this is the location which is there in Koina catchment, and if you see the regional setting of the project area, it is within Western Ghats, which is one of the biodiversity hotspots. It, it is also just next to the Koina Wildlife Sanctuary, more than 1,000 meters uh, above sea level and high speed winds and hilly topography. So, yeah, so arriving at the end, that what to restore is the obvious condition of any ecosystem. So if you protect any natural area, where it reaches or where it goes automatically without any human interference, so this is the kind of forest which is reached within Western Ghats, which is tropical semi-evergreen forest. And after year-round year ecological assessment of the one Kusavde, which is the village, and the surroundings, we decided to go for this particular forest restoration. So this is how it was in 2005, that open grasslands to scrub, then lack of canopy, poor fertility of soil. But as contrast to the earlier project that you've seen, the soil depth was really good means almost 30 to 50 feet of fine soil yeah but just devoid of any organic matter so that's why even if soil is there no vegetation was there because maybe external pressures were there like grazing and fire continuously in western guards all over yeah so that's why maybe uh, the forest succession was not happening and we decided to assist that so definitely a long way to go so these are very simple techniques that we adopted and the results you can see in the next slides that uh, just by having a dry fence with the help of thorns which are available in the surroundings, we just tried to fence it off. And the result was really very nice because grass seeds were already there in the surrounding in the landscape and the biomass improved like anything. You can see in this photograph that inside the fence, it is almost a meter height and outside the fence because of the grazing and fire, it is almost six inches. Yeah, so this is kind of maybe free fertilizer which is offered by uh, grasses. Yeah, so we call grasses as the wealth of the uh, in restoration maybe. Yeah, then we also had live hedge along with the dry fence, and this really served as a fantastic habitat for smaller fauna. Then, as compared to the first year, we see a lot of birds who are nesting and roosting in this fence. Then, since in Western Ghats, if you know all local people, they set the land on fires. So we need to protect the land from fire line. So this kind of fire line is laid every year along the boundary. Then a little bit about soil and moisture conservation, but this is just to assist it. Means you must have heard of government does this Pani Adva, Pani Jirwa schemes. But many times in high rainfall, it, it that itself causes soil erosion. So these are very simple techniques maybe designed by our teacher Gore sir. These are simple stone lines and you see behind each stone line you see soil is getting accumulated, seeds are getting accumulated and the germination starts. Then certain very site specific techniques like this one, loose boulder dams. So this was very deep gully, almost two meter deep. We couldn't cross it. But now if you see it's completely chained and altogether different original uh, uh, terrain has been restored. Yeah, the same thing, loose boulder dams wherein you see a lot of soil is getting accumulated. Then this is another technique that we use is percolation tank, very small ponds maybe you can, not tanks of 10 feet to 15 feet in diameter were dug 
uh, in the entire land in 24 acres and this really served to for fantastic percolation then we did little bit of plantation on the periphery which also got benefited here then stream restoration was done so again the same thing cascade barns loose boulder barns were laid on the streams just by using the local material yeah so that was again very important pi point from this particular project that we had decided not to use any external inputs yeah very minimum on fossil fuels definitely and whatever material was used was local like stones and thorns and everything so the entire ecological footprint of that this particular project is really minimum so the only fossil fuel we use is maybe we go there by cars so that's the only thing that we use yeah so this is another maybe major hazard from western ghats this is called as headward erosion where the caving happens toward headward side of this erosional feature and this particular soil is very fine soil but nothing grows in this soil for years means even if means this is within the within our plot so what we did we just had this tal they call it in marathi like by using loose boulders we just stop the erosion and also on the other end we had this kind of very small burn so result was really fantastic because the uh, earlier it was just mineral so soil very dry devoid of organic matter and because it was arrested all the silt then organic matter started accumulating within those two uh, burns you can see lot of growth is happening and even during summer you see some kind of layer is there yeah so this is how it has been changing you can see manas has used me as a scale here so earlier i used to fit in that particular pit completely and now uh, i am almost 2 feet up yeah so that much soil is getting accumulated and also various types of grasses and herbs are also getting restored there of of course we go only for native plantations but plantation was not the purpose yeah Pur purpose was to restore the strength of the soil so that that soil itself can regenerate and germinate various plants from the surroundings but just as a fun maybe and also just to assist few plants were planted and again we concentrated on the composition from the surrounding forest yeah which has mango jamun then all terminalia the dominant species so this is how you can see bamboo are really growing very nice and this is almost then we also did seed dispersal <coughs> this also gave really nice result you can see again the native seeds of shrubs and few trees were just dispersed then fantastic results were all micro habitats for insects and reptiles are improving like anything then soil temperatures have decreased if you see open soil like the one in that headward erosion it used to reach almost 60 degree centigrade during summer but now just with grasses it has the temperature decreased to 44 degree and all of you must be knowing that for germination you need that kind of temperature and also if the soil has to be kept alive throughout the year for the microbes they need lower temperatures yeah then we use biodiversity as an indicator means what kind of biodiversity was earlier there and what kind of biodiversity now you see clearly indicates the success of this project or you you are on that particular path maybe so earthworms have increased then this many species of spiders have increased and also the number means not that outside the project land there are spiders but if you look at the number it's really enormous yeah and if if you remember that pyramid from school that the base of the pyramid where you should have all producers and primary consumers they should be in maximum number yeah so you obviously see that on this particular land then butterflies have increased reptiles have increased snakes yeah so presence of snakes definitely indicate a uh, lower temperature of soil yeah leeches have increased so many times this owners they they really fear of what, what you girls are telling leeches are increasing that's so bad for human beings but we say no that's a fantastic indicator that soil temperatures are increase decreasing and it's a nice habitat for leeches then another mm, nice observation that we've been doing is watering need of the plants has uh, in uh, decreased like anything earlier we used to plant the water the plant maybe in october or something immediately after monsoon but now it's almost march or april and we don't water the plant yeah maybe we have to just water the plant during may april and may then 
certain rare species are found on the land, not the atul, but <laughs> the Russell's kukri. Yeah, so this is one of the rare snakes. So we were quite happy. Then Sicilian was found after, I think this was found in fifth year. Yeah, so Sicilian, if you know, this is a limbless amphibian found in Western Ghats and quite an endemic kind of uh, species. Then these are certain comparative images. So earlier it used to be seasonal grasses, but now you see regenerating clusters are there and increased biomass is there. So this is how the harsh climate is, you know, strong winds and immediately, you know, followed by drought, almost totally dry condition. This is how it was. But then perennial grasses have started increase. So earlier it was themeda and heteropogon kind of seasonal grasses. But now this particular species is dominant, which is eulalia, which is perennial grass. Then this is how it stays, even in summer. So land is covered with some kind of biomass, which acts as the insulating materials. So this is how land has been changing. So this is the picture from summers, yeah? Total seasonal cover to shrubby clusters. So this is where we are. Then there are many social benefits, like employment, which is offered to the local people. Then we have long way to go, as I told you. Yeah, so we are just approaching the sparse shrubbery, but we have to reach the tall canopy and the old growth forest. I don't know when it will be reached, but what next? So this kind of restoration is passive plus active restoration, no external inputs. So towards real sustainability, so it's really sad that I have to put real before sustainability because many times we use sustainability very blindly. And with most minimum ecological footprint, so we need to take such work at landscape scale. And look at the potential. We have almost more than 30% wasteland in India. And if you just apply this kind of restoration techniques wherein protection is the main thing, and you just assist nature with minimum local materials, it really, really flourish very well. Yeah? So that really can be seen through this project. Involvement of locals for their own lands, and we can try, try to find some livelihood connections from this. And maybe the last thing is we can involve urban citizens and we can create private sanctuaries. So our next project is to develop private sanctuaries, which we are al uh, already launched. Yeah, so that, that's all. Thank you. The role of moisture went in the whole process of restoration. Yeah, it is very important. Role of moisture management, it is needed. If soil moisture is in improved, then only we can go towards succession. Yeah? So succession is initiated due to soil moisture. So that is the first step that we need to do in the restoration. And that is done just free of cost by grasses. It's just that you have to protect it. Yeah? Can you elaborate more on the watering of the plants? Yeah, so we, we we don't really water the plants very much. As I told you, maybe we start watering in April or May. And that also that's also twice a week or something like that. Yeah. So but there is a bore well taken and there is one hand pump on it. So the person, Kishan, he waters that. Have you seen any change in the groundwater? Uh means uh, groundwater levels you're the saying? Ground levels. No, not monitored as such. But bore well leads re really nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there are many springs around. Uh, but for how many years you have to water that plant means starting from the stick? Yeah, so all old saplings which are maybe up to four to four feet, we don't water them. So all or two years. Yeah, so every year we plant maybe hundred to two hundred saplings, we only plant water them. One year initially or two years maybe? Two years. 